Hello from Tissot Macedonian Fair's 21st Annual International Convention here in Thessaloniki. I'm Emmanuel Kondovas, a board member of Tissot, and here we have with us Dr. Terry Lamp, and it is a great honor to have you with us. Um, is it your first time with us? Uh, it is, yes, yes. It's not my first time here in Thessaloniki, but that's a different story. Um, but it certainly is with Tissot Macedonia Thrace. So it's great, it's great to be here, and it's an honor for me to be invited. So thank, thank you. you. How did you find our convention up to now? I think it's lovely. There's a great atmosphere. There's a lot of enthusiasm, and um, it's just nice to be with people that are so keen to do their best and to be good teachers. So it's it's very good, and you know I've seen some really good um, plenaries, and uh, you know the program looks very very good. Very nice. And now your talk is the title "Perspectives of 21st Century Language Learners." Could you tell us a few words about this? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I argue that um, in my talk that, that 21st, the 21st century brings with it new demands for people growing up um, because of various aspects such as globalization, the world's getting smaller, communications are faster, there's more and more knowledge available, um, there's more and more mobility, the constant changes and insecurities and opportunities. So learners need to be prepared for that and they need to be constantly um, thinking about how they're learning, um, they need to be constantly learning new things and they need to learn how to get on with people from very different backgrounds um, and they need to be able to make choices and decisions which are principled um, and not just be led along by the latest fashion or by whatever they read on the internet, they have to be able, you know, the digital literacies are very important. I understand. Now, you mentioned your talk, The 21st Century Learner. This immediately raises the question of how is the 21st century language learner different from the 20th century one, and or is it only the uses of technology and web that differentiate the 21st century learner from that mm -hmm. of the 20th century one? Uh, I think there are a number of <clears throat> uh, issues that relate to language learning. I mean, one is what I said is about mobility, so people travel more, mm -hmm. um, businesses are more global, so people are now working in multinational companies. Um, British Steel in Sheffield was bought by Sweden, that was then bought by Finland, and mm -hmm. I think it's moved on. So, <clears throat> you know, and this sort of means that people are working in these multinational contexts much more. Um, we know that everyone needs English, but actually for English people in particular, um, they say we don't need to learn languages because everyone speaks English. Mm -hmm. That's fine if you're buying, but if you want to sell things, you want to negotiate, it's better to do it in the other language. Mm -hmm. So people are working more closely with people with different backgrounds. And similarly, people are learning alongside people with very diff different backgrounds both as children and as adults. So there's that constant contact. Um, and also, if, if, um, to, because there's more information that's available through the internet, and I know a lot of the internet is in English, but there's, you know, I think the proportion is going down compared with other languages. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you want to access other perspectives and other information, then you need to understand the language as well. Mm -hmm. You're limiting your world if you only speak one language. Exactly. to what you can read and understand in that language. And as the world's getting smaller, more complex, more global, um, you're missing out on a lot of things if, if you just speak one language. So I think people need to learn not just one more language. I mean, everyone should speak English, but then they should be speaking perhaps languages of their neighbours, but other important languages that are growing, the Chinese, Arabic, Portuguese, these languages are... Mm -hmm. really increasing. Now, learner autonomy is of particular importance to you, as it was obvious from your plenary also. Do you suggest that as language teachers we should be teaching the how to learn rather than the what to learn? Um, I think we need to be teaching a bit of both, but probably focusing more on the how to learn. And the how to learn needs content. Um, it can't just be about process, because we need to engage learners, and learners are engaged also by interesting content, 
um, but it can't just remain at that because who, sh who selects the content? The learners need to learn how to find the content that is interesting for them that will open, and they need to be exposed to new ideas as well, but we need to help them to make sense of all of the information and the knowledge that is available to them. Um, so we can't teach without content <clears throat> at all. We can't teach a language without content. Uh, you know, I, I mean, we, some would argue that the, the content could be the grammar. Um, mm -hmm. But actually, learners want to know about places and people. Um, so we need to inspire them with that. Mm -hmm. But we also need to spend a lot of time helping them to become more effective learners, knowing how to learn, how to make decisions about it, and how to know what they need to learn um, in order to move forward, the strengths, the areas for development, mm -hmm. to assess themselves, to be able to know where they are, that's also very important. So yeah, we need to do that as well. And uh, final question, what message would you like to give to today's teacher? Um, I, I always say that teachers, teachers very often working in a context can feel as though they are disempowered, that there, there are certain things within that context that they're not allowed to do. Um, we, can't, uh, we can't help them to develop their autonomy because we have tests or because the classroom is too big or because it will cost more or we don't have the technology or whatever. Um, so I, I think that what, what teachers need to do is to kind of question their own assumptions, first of all, about what it means to be a teacher, to really critically reflect on that. Um, to think what it is that they believe in, in terms of being a teacher, because you need to identify your own vision of teaching and learning. Um, and then to sort of find ways of doing that through trying ideas out, small ideas, small steps, not changing everything at once, but just constantly trying new ideas to get towards where they feel they need to be. But I think having that sort of picture of what kind of a teacher do I want to be is very important. Mm -hmm. um, there's not one way of teaching, so we have to work towards our, our own strengths and beliefs, really, as long as we're critically reflecting on those, mm -hmm. and we're not just doing it because that's how I learned at school, mm -hmm. so that's how I'm going to teach. We need to think about that carefully and come up with our own vision. Thank you very much indeed okay. for being with us. Pleasure.